Instead of dreading review days or even test prep at the end of the school year, I love it. I love it. It's like my favorite days of the school year because I know my students are going to have fun, which means I'm also going to have fun. And I love to give them a little prize here and there. So if you are looking to make test prep fun this year and stress-free, then this is the video for you. And in case we haven't met yet, my name is Asia Hines. I'm a seventh grade math teacher and resource creator. I teach in Northern Virginia. And one of my favorite things in the entire world is helping other math teachers make math class engaging. I want students to be rushing to come to your class. And if that is your vibe, you need to hit that subscribe button so you receive notifications and never miss one of my videos. You've probably already realized that giving your students a study guide, expecting them to do the study guide and then actually study doesn't really cut it. And you know, there are like mixed opinions about gamifying a classroom, but me personally, I love a game and they're in middle school. Let the kids play games. In today's video, I have put together six of my favorite review games that you can try in your classroom. They're easy, they're low prep, and they are sure to have kids begging for a review day. All right, so let's go ahead and get into game one, shall we? All right, so this first game is a classroom classic. It is called Trashketball. It turns review into a competitive game and all you need is some trash and a trash can. So here's how it works. You're gonna divide students into teams. I like to keep my teams around three to four students. It just depends on your classroom size. And then you're going to display a question on the board. And you can do this easily by just having your document camera and showing a question, or you can have a slideshow ready to go. So you're gonna give students time to discuss in their groups and write their answers down on whatever paper that you decide to give them. If they're correct, they earn a point and then they get a chance to shoot the piece of paper into a trash can for a bonus point. I usually put a line somewhere in my classroom and I also found this trash can on walmart.com, but I also linked a similar one in my Amazon storefront. You see basketballs in here. These are actually for another review game called March Madness. More on that later. Uh, but for this game, you just need pieces of paper and they're gonna use that as their basketball, which is why it's called trash get ball. All right, let's get into game number two. All right, the second game is a game show. Now, some people will call this Jeopardy, but I think Jeopardy is kind of boring and kids don't even know what Jeopardy is anymore. So I just call it like a game show. I'm hosting a game show. So the way I introduce it to students is that I tell them we're playing a game show. I explain how the game works and you can say it's inspired by Jeopardy. It's up to you. But I love game shows because it's another opportunity for students to work in groups and they actually have a little bit of choice because much like with Jeopardy, they are choosing points and answering a question, whatever that question may be, and then they earn points for their team. There are a lot of different ways to play a game show in your classroom or Jeopardy, but one way that you could do it is the actual way that they play it. So instead of having individual people, you're obviously gonna have students in groups and you can just choose randomly which group goes first. And then if they get it correct, they get to choose the next question. And then you have teams buzzing in like if they wanna answer it, okay? I'm sure you don't have actual classroom buzzers that can, so you can just have them raise their hand to answer the question, and then you just rotate through the different groups, okay? So that's my favorite way to play it. If you see that one group is answering the questions the most, then you may wanna implement a different kind of system um, where each group is forced to answer in some way. That way, you know, everyone's involved. The next game, game number three, is Around the World. This is something that I came up with about mm, two years ago um, because I had a lot of different cultures um, and backgrounds represented in my classroom and I wanted to find a way to incorporate that. And so I started doing around the world. So with this, students are visiting different countries virtually and at each country, they're going to answer four questions and learn a fun fact about each country. I chose countries that my students um, were from. And so they were very, 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 very excited when they saw their home country represented and there's no better feeling. So along with that, I did give them 
the virtual, it's just virtual in Google Slides, but I also gave them a recording sheet to go along with it. So as you can see, we have Norway here and then they have their uh, fun fact in the corner. One thing that I thought of recently is to also include a passport. So with the passport, students will travel to each destination and then I will give them a stamp if all four of their questions are correct. So that's just an easy way to provide accountability as they work through each country. Oh, and I forgot to mention, and you probably saw it here, each country represents a different strand. So it's like rational numbers, proportions, integers. So very cool, uh, very fun. They do that individually, but you could also have them do it as stations. So you could really turn this into like a transform, what's it called? Classroom transformation, where students, like you can have a table. So there would be a table for Norway, rational numbers in Norway, and then they would do it like stations. And you could be like, um, what's it called? Where you get your pass, um, customs. You could be set up and you could have a little hat on and say that your customs, when they get through each day, when they finish each station, they come to customs and get their passport stamp. Very cool, very cool. Number four, my personal favorite. I should have saved the best for last, but I didn't. If you haven't heard of this by now, then you have not been on my channel long enough. Make sure you watch this video so you can learn more about the game, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview here. Ghosts in the Graveyard. I learned about this when I was student teaching and I haven't stopped playing it since but I did put my own little twist on it. But the way it works, it's usually played during Halloween season, hence Ghosts in the Graveyard. However, I figured out a way to make it apply to every season. So depending on when you're watching this video, I'm filming this video in March, so I have a St. Patrick's Day themed game. I really have it for every holiday. So if you wanna check that out, you can, but make sure you go watch that video. Okay, so students are answering challenges in groups. As they get the challenges correct, they're going to earn a ghost, okay? That ghost will be worth a mystery point value. The point value will be determined based on a tombstone. So I have three tombstones on the board and they can choose if they want to put their ghost on A, B, or C. Again, the tombstones actually have the mystery point values, which is going to give the ghost a point value at the end of the game. So. I like to switch it up on them. So the first one might be 10 points. The second one might be four points. The third one might be negative two points, which means they're gonna lose some points. So they never know uh, what the point value is and it really keeps them on their toes. And I love it because every kid is engaged. They get so into it. I usually assign one student to be the person who runs up to me with the recording sheet so I don't have full groups of kids coming up. I guess that's one thing I forgot to mention. I do, I sit in one central location. I have my answer sheet. I like, I have my answer sheet tucked into like a file folder uh, that I can refer to. And then I just give them check marks. And each challenge has three questions. So if they don't get three check marks, then they don't get to get their ghost. Okay, again, if that didn't make sense, make sure you go watch the other video that I have about it. All right, our next game, game number five is lottery. All right, you're gonna grab 30 sticky notes and preferably like the full size ones, not like I have here. And on each sticky note, you're going to write a number. You're gonna number them one through 30. Now on the back of the sticky note, you're going to give it some kind of point value. So I don't know why I only have this orange pen, but write it in a light color so kids can't see the point value behind it. So you see uh, this is number one, and then on the back, it would be negative three at the point value. So also have something on there that resets their points to zero. So it's similar to the game Zonk. If you've never heard of that, I do have a blog post about it, um, but it just resets their points to zero. But the idea is that you would just stick all the sticky notes up on the board in order one through 30, and they would just pick it down. But the way this works, so imagine you have a study guide, students complete their study guide. So you give them time in class to complete the study guide. Everyone's done, it's time to play. You can do this in teams or you can do it individually. And then I choose a question from the packet. I also use like, for that I just go to the website random number gem generator or Google actually has one built in and I have it randomly select one of the questions from our packet. So hopefully the packet has at least 30 questions. I usually do let it have 30 questions. Choose a question from the packet, have the students tell you the answer that they got. If it's correct, they get to pick one of the sticky notes. 
If they're incorrect, they don't get to pick. And then it just goes to another student. Sticky notes come down and they stay down until the next class and then you can put them all back up. Okay, so that's how that's played. And then for the final game, da -da -da -da, attack. This one is an idea from Math in the Middle. She has a great blog. I first did it during, I think it was October. And so the way it works is you have students draw something something themed because it was October I had them draw pumpkins so they're in groups and each group has one person draw the pumpkin on the board okay to represent their group and give them a timer like set a timer for one minute and give them time to draw their pumpkin it's really fun to see how they draw things so then it's time to play you're going to display a review question give groups time to answer and then choose one group at random so again popsicle sticks or the little spinning wheel. If their answer is correct, that group gets to attack another group's pumpkin. And the way they attack it is, I forgot to mention, this is on the um, dry erase board. If you have a whiteboard, have them draw their pumpkins on there. Uh, if you don't, you can have them use like um, chart paper. Anyways, they attack one of the pumpkins by drawing an X on it. So here's a twist. If their answer is incorrect, then you as the teacher get to draw an X on their pumpkin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you can give another group the opportunity to answer the question correctly. At the end of the game, after well, it's not even at the end of the game. After a pumpkin has been attacked five times, then their pumpkin gets erased and they're destroyed. And they're technically out of the game, but you can still let them keep playing the game because it's review. They need to review. All right, so we went over six games today. Trash can ball, which you only need a trash can and some trash for around the world, which is, I guess, technically not a game, but you can turn it into a game by using the passports. Game show or Jeopardy. Ghosts in the Graveyard, which is my personal favorite. Lottery, which you only need post-it notes for. And Attack, which you literally just need a whiteboard or some chart paper for. All right, so which game are you most excited to try? Let me know in the comments below. I've also listed other resources down below. Okay, if this video was helpful, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And if you want more videos like this or want me to go into more detail about any of the games, please let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.